We've already talked about the idea of marginal analysis earlier in the semester, but we talked about that with single, bar single variable functions. Now we want to expand on it to include the idea of multivariable functions, talk about the results that we can calculate, and how we can interpret those. So as a reminder, derivatives always tell us about the rate of change of a function. Specifically with marginal analysis, we looked at how evaluating the derivative at a certain value tells us how much the function would change if our x value were to increase by one unit. So for partial derivatives, meaning derivatives of multivariable functions, they tell us the effect on a function value from increasing a single variable. Or to put that in a slightly different form, for some given function, f of xy, we can calculate f sub x, the partial derivative with respect to x, or f sub y, the partial derivative with respect to y. f sub x would tell us what happens when x increases. since that's the variable we would be differentiating with respect to. And f sub y would tell us what happens when y increases. We can look at applying this in our first example, where we have a firm that produces two different types of calculators. We're given a revenue and a cost function we're going to be asked to evaluate the profit function, or I'm sorry, the marginal profit function with respect to x and respect to y, and then evaluate that at a specific output level. So what we'll be looking at is when we um, interpret p sub x, we'll be looking to interpret what happens to our profit as x increases, which in this case means as our production of type A calculators increases. And when we look at p sub y, we'll be looking at what happens when our y variable increases. So if we increase production of the calculator type B, what effect will that have on our profit? So the first thing that we want to find here is our profit function so that we can calculate the partial derivatives of it. So profit is always calculated as revenue minus cost. So what we're going to want to do is take our given revenue function and subtract our given cost function. And we can turn to Wolfram Alpha to take care of that for us. So in Wolfram Alpha, we can simply enter our revenue function. And then what we want to do is subtract our cost function. So we'll subtract and then open up a set of parentheses to make sure we're subtracting this entire function. and then hit enter or click evaluate. So this will give us again our input to check. We want to make sure that there are parentheses around that entire cost function so that we're subtracting each of those terms and then the output will be our profit function. So in part B what we want to do is evaluate the partial derivative with respect to x and then evaluate that derivative at a given input level so we can click on that output so that we have our profit function to work with. And then we can take the derivative of this function with respect to x. Well, it looks like it didn't like that, so let's update that a little bit. Uh, to be a little more specific here, we want to say the partial derivative with respect to x of this function, which is our profit function we already generated. And now we can see this correct input interpretation. We're taking the partial derivative of our function with respect to x, and we're outputting this marginal profit function. So that would be the result for our derivative with respect to x. Clicking on that result will allow us to evaluate it for x equals 1,200 and y equals 1,900.
So our result here is 90, telling us that P sub X of 1200, 1900 is equal to 90. Before we interpret that result, we'll go ahead and look at our calculation for part C so we can compare those two numbers and compare our interpretations. So I'm going to click back a couple of times until I have my profit function again. And now what we'll want to evaluate is the partial derivative with respect to y of our profit function. So we see we have that delta over delta y notation, so we're differentiating with respect to y and outputting this given result or outputting this result, which we can then evaluate for x equals twelve hundred and y equals nineteen hundred. And we see that we get a result in this case of negative forty nine. So what we found is that P sub Y of 1200 comma 1900 will be equal to negative 49. So we have one positive result, one negative result, and we can look at how these interpretations will differ considering those different results. In part B, we can say that when we're selling 1200 units of type A, and 1,900 units of type B, the profit will increase approximately or will increase by about $90 per unit increase in the production of type A calculators. Or the shorter way to say that is, since the result of our derivative function evaluated at this point is positive, and we are looking at our partial derivative with respect to x, that means increasing our x value will cause an increase in our function value. So increasing the production of type A calculators increases our profit in this case specifically by about $90 per unit. In part C, we have our partial derivative with respect to y at the same production level that we had in part B. We can see from this that increasing production of the type B calculators by one unit will decrease our profit since our resulting or the result of our derivative function is negative. So this will decrease profit by about forty nine dollars. So in each case we're talking about what happens as the corresponding variable increases for the partial derivative with respect to x, if our x variable increases, in this case our profit increases, when we look at the partial derivative with respect to y, if y increases, we see that our profit actually decreases.